tell me when to stop, okay? Stop, okay? Yeah. High five. Boom, you made the YouTube channel. Good there you go. <laughs>it's 9 30 a.m. I'm in Connecticut I'm, uh, I'm still home I've been home doing local and regional events for the last couple of weeks as you guys know who follow the channel but today is very exciting today I'm driving about an hour down to New Haven Connecticut for a one-day magic expo it's being put on by the Amazon.com of magic which is Penguin Magic. I remember when Penguin Magic first became a thing. I was in college, and there were a handful of ma you know of, of uh, magic shops around the world that had started having websites. I mean, when I was in college, you know, a small local establishment having a website was you know kind of a, a big deal. And magic shops are notoriously difficult to maintain, you know, to make a profit, to even pay their rent. There's I mean, as many magicians as there are. There's just not that many magicians to sustain the rent, which is why if you've ever been to a magic shop like in New York City or somewhere, you'll notice it's not on the street level. It's three stories up and you have to know it's there and you walk up a million flights of dusty stairs and go into a creaky, tiny little room that has a million magic tricks set up in it. So at that time, there were only a few of the local, the, the more successful local magic shops that had opened up online stores. And uh, one of them was my magic shop in downtown Buffalo, Elmwood Magic, who became incredibly successful in the online game in the early days of of online magic shops. Um, more on that later. But then penguinmagic.com opened up and it was unbelievable. I don't know if they were the first magic shop to embrace video demos to sell magic tricks, but they were certainly the ones that popularized it. They had this young, cool magician, uh, Oz Perlman. You, you may know, having just gotten to the finals of America's Got Talent last season. He was just demoing all the tricks in their entire catalog and doing video. So you could actually, it was the first time as a magician, you could see what a trick looked like before you bought it. You just, before that, this, this may sound crazy to, to people, but before that as a magician, you just had to read a description of what the trick looked like. It would be like crazy amount of hype in these descriptions. Spectator chooses a card, replaces it to the deck, floats out of the deck, turns into origami, sails around the room and explodes. <laughs> Written across the ceiling in the ash left from the card, name of their first girlfriend or whatever, whatever it was. These, these descriptions, there was so much hyperbole, but that's all you had to go on, so you just bought bought things based on text descriptions and then you got it and you were like, uh, video demos for magic tricks totally changed the entire industry. So a couple years ago, Penguin did this experiment where they went to like four or five cities throughout the US and they put on a one day magic expo where they invited a handful of carefully picked, kind of curated, the some of the best and most inventive magic creators who are also great performers. I went a couple of years ago to a trial run they did in Boston. I thought it was amazing. I had a blast. I saw a lot of the local, regional magicians, a lot of the, and I was blown away that so many of the full-timers came out to it because you don't usually see full-time professional magicians come out to these types of events. They are generally geared towards amateurs, uh, towards hobbyists, and that's not to say that's a bad thing. That's just, that's what they're targeted for. All right, all right.
The magician you were just watching, that was Paul Richards, and he was the owner of Elmwood Magic, the local magic shop in downtown Buffalo that I was telling you guys about earlier in the vlog. Paul was crucial, foundational to my development as a young magician because he was the owner of the local magic shop. So when I was a kid, my dad would take me in there and later as a teenager, my best friend Adam and I would, we would go in and we would point at tricks and he would show them to us. If we liked something, we would buy it and then he would help us learn it. He would teach us the trick. That's something that's being lost in today's digital age, which is that young magicians, uh, aspiring magicians, you, you buy a trick online and then it just comes in and you learn it based on a video sitting by yourself. You don't get that personalized instruction and I, I really do think that's affecting magic in a negative way. So anyway, Paul owned Elmwood Magic and he took it from a small local magic shop to one of the biggest and most successful magic shops in the world when we entered the age of online retailers. He got out of the game a few years ago, sold Elmwood to Penguin Magic and it was actually Paul that had the original idea to do Penguin Live Expos, which is of course what this vlog is all about. I'm not sure I ever properly thanked Paul for how much he did for me as a young aspiring magician. He gave me so much confidence, he gave me so much motivation, and he just really inspired me to become the professional that I am today. So Paul, if you're watching this, Thank you, I really can't thank you enough for what you did for me and I assume so many other young magicians over the years. All right, back to the vlog. time so far. I love how many kids are here. The lectures have been great. I'm gonna grab a quick bite to eat with some people and then head right on back. The restaurant was closed. Lunch. Uh, you guys have probably seen it more recently though, uh, week after week, fooling millions of people as a semi-finalist in America's Got Talent. Uh, I'm not going to tell you that Eric is one of the best. I'm telling you, he's one of the best there's ever been. Put your hands together for Mr. Eric. Did you know exactly where the point is and where the point's going to go? I'll do it in slow motion so you can see them all. The second, the very instant the next coin flies from your left. To your right. Introduce yourself, this will be a nice bookend for the for the day. Uh, Ethan Brackett, hanging out with Brian Miller. Yeah. Penguin Live. Yeah, what did you, th what did you think? It was great. I mean, I, I don't work for Penguin or anything, so we can be. Yeah. No, I actually, I, I really did. Yeah, really. it was great. Eric was great, all the guys were great. Yeah, and so, so this is an interesting thing, so I, I never mentioned this earlier. What I was so excited about today was there was a last minute announcement that Greg Wilson was gonna be here, and uh, Greg is a hero of mine. I've Worshipped him when I was growing up. I met him a bunch of years ago. I've had beers with him. We've become kind of acquaintances, friendly acquaintances. I was so excited he was going to be here. So disappointed to find out that he wasn't. But they replaced him with Eric Jones, and it couldn't have been a better replacement. <laughs> I mean, it was unbelievable. Eric was insane. I mean, you guys know him from America's Got Talent. We magicians have known him for years and years, and he's one of the best. Like they said, not just one of the best today, but one of the best there's ever been. And it was it was awesome. So, all right, I'm gonna go get some food. See you guys later. What an incredible day that was. I, I really do enjoy spending time around magicians as much as sometimes I, I, I feel like I needed to, to get out of the magic industry and get away from that for a little while. And, and sometimes, you know, being away from something for a while really makes you, you enjoy it more when you're there. You know, you can't have dark without light. You can't have loud without quiet. And, you know, sometimes you can't have magic without not having magic in your life for a little while. It was amazing that there were so many kids there. I met a bunch of them, hung out with them, asked them to show me tricks and helped them a little bit on some of their stuff. The kids were really respectful, first of all. These like 13, 14, 15 year olds, really respectful of me and the other 
uh, you know, older magicians. They were out of their mind that Eric Jones was there, which, you know, uh, is is great that it just worked out and he happened to, to be able to, to be there. I will end that here and always remember that our world is a shared experience. I had to keep my hands on the wheel and two eyes on the road. So you guys have a great night. In case this ever makes a, a cut, like a, a bonus video or something, I just did a nine minute monologue about what I'm doing today. And that's longer than most of my entire vlogs. So I have a feeling I have to cut that nine minutes down to about 30 seconds. <laughs>